Let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's uh, check in with James Sample. He's a law professor at Hofstra University. James, I want to talk to you about the confrontational tone we saw from the former president uh, in court as he displayed to the judge as well as uh, the attorneys there. Uh, what do you make of it? Well, Mike, I think that there's an old phrase in the law that when the, the law is against you, you argue the facts, and when the facts are against you, you argue the law, and when both the law and the facts are bad for you, you scream and yell and stamp your feet. And I think that the president, uh, the former president's efforts in, in court today and really throughout this trial when he wasn't on the stand, but even today from the witness stand, are an attempt to get us to pay attention to the temper tantrums rather than the underlying facts uh, that, as Karina reported and as Attorney General James said in her remarks outside the courtroom before going in today, the, the real facts are the numbers, and the numbers are not good here. The numbers tell the story, and I think the Attorney General's office got the former president to make some very key admissions on the stand today, despite all the histrionics. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. What do you see as the most important developments, uh, which, as you pointed out, in some cases, uh, that's all getting kind of overshadowed by the outbursts? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Attorney General's office got uh, Trump to admit today, to agree, that the financial statements and his personal guarantee of those financial statements were intended to induce the banks to lend money to the organization. That's a very key fact, given that this is a fundamental fraud case. And so those statements, which have already been found by Judge Engeron in the earlier phase of the trial to contain numerous, numerous errors and misvaluations, um, those statements were intended to produce reliance. They did produce that reliance. And the fact that Mr. Trump admitted that on the stand today will make the inevitable appeal of the judge's earlier fact-finding phase all that more difficult for him to succeed in. And it was a bit of a circus today. How do you think the judge handled things? I think the judge is faced with a, a Sisyphean task. It's almost impossible. I mean, he's faced with a task as a, as a state court judge in a trial court with trying to rein in a former president of the United States, um, an individual who, on top of the office that he held, is a kind of chaos agent. That's actually what he does best. And at times today, it seemed like Mr. Trump was trying to tell the judge what to do, the attorneys what to do, to feel free to insult the attorney general who was seated in the front row. But at the end of the day, this is not a normal dialogue. He's appearing as a witness, as a named defendant, in a $250 million civil fraud trial that, though not a criminal case, could very well end up being the death knell of his entire business empire on which so much of his identity is staked. James, we've seen uh, Don Jr., we've seen Eric, now we've seen the president. Uh, his daughter, Ivanka, will testify on Wednesday. How key will her testimony be? What are you going to be looking for? You know, it's, it's a really good question, and I think that this is going to be one of the most interesting moments in this entire trial. She's, as Karina's report said, Mike, not a defendant in this case, um, but she certainly has the ability and, and the proximity to the key defendants, including three of the defendants who are her fellow family members, to uh, offer corroborating evidence, corroborating what the attorney general has established, maybe to buttress her, her father. But, you know, I think it's telling that she's being called by the prosecution, even though she's not one of the defendants, they're calling her as a material witness to the key events, elements, and representations that her family members made over the course of the facts that give rise to this case. James, one final question uh, before we let you go. Uh, what do we read into the former president's demeanor about his legal situation right now? Because this is just a civil case. He's got criminal charges in Florida, Georgia, Washington, out in Colorado. They're trying to get him off the ballot. There's all these cases uh, underway. What does his demeanor tell us about where he is legally, do you think? 
Well, I think where he is legally is in a lot of trouble, but if there's anybody who can escape it, he is the Houdini of legal trouble at this point. As he said from the beginning, he could stand in Fifth Avenue um, and you know commit crimes and, and no one would hold him responsible. To a certain extent, and the poll data seems to bear it out, um, so far anyway, he has escaped serious consequences and repercussions. And I think that where he stands is that his only chance in succeeding in, if he's going to get off scot-free in all of these cases, is to somehow convince the jurors in the cases where there will be a jury, the judge in this case, that this is all um, just partisan. But I think the facts overwhelm the histrionics. And hopefully, um, wherever one falls on one's political preferences, hopefully justice, in the sense of legal fact-finding, does prevail. James Sample, thanks so much for your insights. Thank you.